So now let's take a look at the system we have here today, and then we'll go ahead and take a listen and, and show you some examples of how to use gain compensation and, and get along nicely with a couple of guys sharing head amps. So the CL5 here, it, it represents our front of house console, and this speaker will be our PA. Here we've got the RAO 3224, and we're using these mic pre's, we're sharing these mic pre's. Here we've got the CL3, and it represents our monitor desk. And the speaker, that's our monitor, let's say. So now, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at how to set this up and use it and share head amps comfortably. Okay, so now let's take a look at a typical sound check and what, what might happen and, and, and how, it would, how it would go. So now, let's assume that my monitor guy and I have had a conversation and we agree that I'm going to drive the head amps. So let's take a look. Well, in fact, we'll look at eight channels at a time. So as the band starts to play, I start to dial up the mic pre's. And as I do, I start to turn on gain compensation. Now I have the ability to turn them on globally, to turn, to turn uh, gain compensation on globally, but I'm gonna do it channel by channel. And the monitor guy, if he's looking at a head amp page, he will see this, he'll see phantom power, he'll see that I've turned gain compensation on, he'll see where that blue tick is and know, know that it's there. So something to remember is that gain compensation, while it is channel by channel, it's also scene by scene. So it's, it's recommended that if you're going to use gain compensation, you use it on every channel, every scene. Because imagine you, you store a scene, and the next scene, you forget to turn gain compensation on, and the head amp is different. There could be a surprise there, and, and you wouldn't want that. So remember, if you're going to use it, just use it every channel, every scene. So we go along and we, we set these mic pre's and, uh, and at the same time that I'm doing this, the monitor guy is probably dialing in the digital gains however he needs them to be, up or down, so that he can get his fader into the resolution where, where he wants it, get it near unity. And once I get them locked in, I'll be living on the digital gain as well because I don't need to go to the head amp. I'll go there if I have to, but for the most part, you shouldn't have to change the head amp once you're in show mode. Well, Let's say, let me give you an example of uh, a keyboard player. Let's say, let's say this last channel here, it represents a, a keyboard player, and I've asked him during sound check, the band is jamming, and I, I ask him to turn the keyboard all the way up, step on the pedal so it's the loudest it can be, and also to play as loud as patches. And so the guys are having a good time, and monitor guy is, is dialing in, is dialing in the, the ears and the wedge mixes. And I've got it in the PA. But then when the band really gets to rehearsing the song they're gonna do, we find out that they're playing something much softer. He's not playing those patches. The overall dynamic is less. Well now, what's gonna happen is if we take a look at the mic pre, he's not hitting it nearly as hot. Well, we know that the hotter you hit it within reason, the better quality sound. You wanna use as many of those bits as possible. So in this example, what I would do is I would come, come by this mic pre and I turn it up so that we start to get into the mic pre better. We start to hit, hit it harder and, and what happens because gain compensation is doing the inverse, it's turning it down as I turn it up. So the monitor guy does not hear a level change. I don't hear a level change because it's maintaining the volume for the network. But because I'm dialing it up hotter and we're using more of the converter, the, 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 the signal comes up, the noise floor goes down, so we have a better quality. We just don't have a, a louder signal. We don't hear a level change, but it sounds the quality gets better. So now let's give an example of um, when you would want to turn gain compensation off to make an adjustment. So this channel here is the kick drum. So let's say that I have set it with the roadie and everything is fine. Well, when the drummer sits down, he hits the kick drum and one of us realizes that now we're clipping. We're clipping the mic pre. So in, in this example, if we're clipping this mic pre and I turn it down, the analog side would come down, but we're locked in at a very hot signal. So on the digital side, as I turn it down and, and the gain compensation circuit turns it up, we would have clipping on the digital side. So nobody wants to hear that. So that would be an example of when I would turn this off 
I'd make the adjustment, I'd bring it down, I'd make sure it was good with my monitor guy, and as soon as we were both happy with the, with the level, I could go ahead and turn it back on and go on. So there's a couple of examples of how to, how to use it, when to turn it on, when to turn it off before you make an adjustment. Next, we'll take a listen to how you can make an adjustment to the head amp and, and have gain compensation on and not hear a change in volume. Okay, so now let's take a quick listening test. So in our example, remember the CL5 in the speaker here represents front of house and PA, while the CL3 is monitor location and a wedge. So I've got this loop of a dirty fender road sound. I'll bring it up and you'll hear, I'll make head up adjustments with gain compensation off and you'll hear the change. I would hear it, everyone on the network would hear it. But then when I turn gain compensation on, uh, we'll listen and you'll see that it doesn't it's, n it's not an audible level change. We'll turn the PA off and we'll listen at his end and you'll see the same thing, that also it does not, it does not affect his mixes because the level main is being maintained by the gain compensation circuit. So, so if I turn this up, when I turn the level up and down with no gain compensation, of course, we hear a level change. But if I lock in gain compensation, I can make big changes, big changes to the mic pre, and we don't hear a level change. Just the quality change because the signal to noise ratio uh, is much improved. So if I bring this down and we now listen to monitors, you'll see the same thing is true. I'll just leave gain compensation on and make big changes, but the level doesn't change at his end, so he doesn't have to change his mixes. He's not got angry musicians because I'm fouling things up for him. So there you go, thanks so much. Now you see how we've got, uh, how well gain compensation works and how much you can trust sharing head amps with another mix engineer, where in the past it's been, been quite an uncomfortable experience sometimes. So there you have it. Uh, the gain compensation circuit within CL and the RIO system works extremely well. And uh, thanks for your time.